Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. When I agreed to participate today, I laughed because I found out the organizers were calling me the space farmer. <laughs> I'm not sure I would describe myself quite that way, but I understood why they did. Before I was a senior research scientist at NASA, and long before the World Food Prize changed my life, my husband and I lived on a farm in Italy, raising chickens, goats, pigs, and harvesting olives and grapes. But since then, I've learned that farms like ours aren't just plots of land. Our conception of the farm also has to extend upward to satellites orbiting, the, orbiting thousands of kilometers in the exosphere. It has to extend outward to the biolabs, scientists, policymakers, and more, and to all of you. Here's why. For most of history, agriculture has been a long, slow process of evolution. Farmers worked independently, tweaking and perfecting their practices over centuries. But that process of slow adaptation won't work anymore. The climate is changing faster than at any point in the last 10,000 years, any point since the farmer planted the first seed. Here's, here's the uh, recent temperature rise on land that the farmers are experiencing. That's where my colleagues and I come in. They have just a few years to make the farmers have just a few years now to make progress, rather than a whole generation. In 2010, I co-founded an organization called AgMIP. It stands for Agricultural Model Intercomparison and Improvement Project. It is, the emphasis on improvement. It's a global network of more than 1,000 researchers who build and use crop models, climate models, economic models, and more. But we go a step further. We collaborate because we're in energized by a simple question. What's better than one model? The answer is dozens of them. <laughs> Working together, eliminating the biases inherent to any single model. We lean on our community of scientists to share information, and we tap into artificial intelligence to help synthesize all sorts of data, remote sensing, crop modeling, climate data. And what, for example, we learn is that artificial intelligence has helped surface the importance of extreme temperatures on maize. It points us modelers where we need to improve the models. This approach means better, more responsive science, which leads to better, more responsive farms. We use the improved models to project the impacts of climate change. What you see here is a synthesis of 12 crop models, even dozen, from 2022 to the end of the century. And what it shows is the extreme vulnerability of crop yields in the lower latitudes to climate change, where most low-income countries are located. Now let's look at this animation of the Enhanced Vegetation Index for Ghana, which tracks more than 20 years of the growing seasons. What we see is that crop and climate and vegetation data is not a simple, tidy story. Each year is different in the animation. Each region is different. But even so, this index tells us roughly what we can expect over year to year and year over year. And with it, AGNIP can then help policymakers pinpoint exactly where, when, and how they can help farmers. Finally, let's go to Asia. Here, our goal isn't just to help rice farmers adapt to climate change. We're hoping to help mitigate climate change itself. You may be surprised to learn that after emissions from livestock, growing rice puts more methane into the atmosphere than any other agriculture activity. But there's reason for optimism. Typically, rice is grown by flooding fields and keeping them flooded. But in Vietnam and India, AGMIP models suggest that by alternating the wetting and drying of the rice fields, farmers can reduce the methane emitted. 
and in some places even boost their yields. So far, early results show an increase in yield, about 27%, and a roughly 38% decrease in methane emissions. It's extremely promising. But there's one last point I want to reiterate. These advances are only possible with collaboration. Collaboration between scientists, policymakers, and farming groups. It's the only way to get the information in all of our many AgMIP models to farmers all around the world, the people who really need them. In the end, collaboration is how we sow the seeds of progress. Thanks.